It's another episode of Wearable Today, episode number three. Can't log into your Diablo 3 account. Today we're going to be talking about 73. Did I say 3? 73. Okay. Episode number... I've already messed it up. Episode number 73. Can't log into your Diablo 3 account. We're going to be talking about Soli and Jacquard. They are not characters on Star Trek. They are new things coming out in wearable technology. I'm going to show you what this is. It looks like a pill, giant pill, um, but no, it's a it's a cool wearable. Um, and of course, we got Luke here. We got Birdie here. We're going to talk about the hottest wearables. We're going to go talk about the Taiwan Expo, uh, what's going with Disney Playmation, all that on this episode number 73, Can't Log Into Your Diablo 3 Account of Wearable Today. Hey, everybody. Jeffrey Powers here from Geekazine, Think Magazine, Put In A Geek. And, uh, and, you know, Geekazine and, of course, Wearable Today over at Jeff at WearableToday.com. And as always, my two cohorts in crime. I always say my cohort in crime, but it's two cohorts in crime nowadays. Mr. Luke Wallace and Mr. Birdie. How are you guys doing? Doing good tonight, Jeff. Yes, if you're, uh, if you're looking for me, uh, you can find me on Twitter at Luke Luca. You can tweet me during the show. You can tweet me after the show, before the show, uh, whenever. Uh, or you can email me at luke at wearabletoday.com. And if you want to reach out to Birdie, it's not really in a great mood tonight. Uh, it's Birdie at wearabletoday.com. Why is Birdie not in a good mood today? I don't know. Because I've been gone. Oh, uh, that's true. Yeah, we did have a three-week uh, sabbatical as I ripped down a wall and put up a whole bunch of brick. It was it was horrible. I hurt that's my nice. arms. I hurt my back, too. So, mm. you know, it's... Yeah, a lot of work. So, yeah. But anyway, we're not talking about me and work. We're going to talk about wearable technology and our first segment in Big News Little Arms. <sighs> it's a very tired dinosaur. <laughs> yeah, he's tired tonight. He's tired yeah. tonight. So, first up, you may be asking yourself, what are the five hottest wearables right now? What are the well, five hottest wearables right now? No, you're supposed to ask yourself that, not me. Oh, oh don't okay. ask me. I don't. Okay. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell you. But you know who will tell you? Who? Cheat Sheet. CheatSheet.com has a list of them, uh, and they include wearables from Garmin, Fitbit, Xiaomi, and more. So you can see, you know, they've ranked all the wearables there. They've got this really nice article that goes through uh, what they are. Um, I'll just rattle them off real quick. It's uh, Fitbit is number one. Uh, Xiaomi as number two with its Mi Band, uh, Garmin coming in at number three, Samsung in number four, and Jawbone at number five. Uh, so they, you know, and they, they tell you all about uh, why they think those are the hottest right now. And they do, they do say that uh, the Apple Watch is currently being uh, left off, but they're going to keep an eye on that and uh, potentially update that uh, list as you know wearables yeah. uh, continue to grow. Because it hasn't really, uh, it, 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 it's, it's out, but not everybody has it yet. It's, it's still too new to start counting it in yeah. all the numbers. So. Yeah, definitely. So, All right, moving on. The Taiwan Expo uh, saw a ton of wearables this last week. Smartphones with larger camera sensors, rings that connect the husband and wife, and multiple companies with their own versions of smart glass. Um, now, the, the, the biggest one, of course, was the build-your-own cloud service to manage your device. I'm not calling it cloud service, cause, and the idea is, is like, oh, you know, the cloud comes down. So when the cloud comes down, that means it's a fog. So does that mean that we're build your own fog device? Are we making fog machines here? But uh, they had a lot of cool stuff over at the uh, Taiwan Expo. If you want to read more on that, we've got it over at voiceofamerica.com. So you may have heard of Disney Playmation, but what is it? Well, it's for those of you that want to change the playground landscape. So Disney has these wearables that you'll be able to walk around as a Jedi or attack Ultron as Iron Man. They've got virtual reality that they've got these virtual reality devices that really get kids and, you know, let's be honest, there's a lot of adults too, uh, gets them out and active. So there's a big link over on dorksideoftheforce.com. That's dork side of the force d-o-r-k not dark side dork side of the force it's a pun <laughs> yeah it's, it's not luke side of the force not luke wallace yeah. side of the force but dork side of the force so. but yeah they've got some great videos it looks really cool yeah um, yeah definitely 
All right, well, we got a brand new segment here over at uh, Wearable Today, and it is called On the Medical Front. I don't know. There you go. Do that. Oh, wow. Do that again. Do that again. Let's try that again. On the medical front. Someone just died. Someone just died on the show. No, no, not at all. You know, two weeks ago, I'll tell you, my health hasn't been too good in the last couple weeks. Two weeks ago, my back went out. Um, I was playing drums on Saturday, and I had, uh, had it's basically a tendonitis thing, um, where your my forearms just they tensed up, and and so I'm as as you if you watch when I come back on screen, you'll see I'm wearing a brace on my arm here. Um, it seems to happen every year when it gets warmer and stuff like that. And as I get older, new problems new problems just start to emerge. But can wearables relieve that type of chronic pain? Um, a new device, it's called the Active Edge, and it claims to improve the endurance, the flexibility, and your sleep patterns for a regenerative uh, body, um, which is why a lot of people do yoga, so they can, uh, so they can uh, flex better, move better. Um, so this device, Active Edge, is, is here to help you l- work on getting that better. But are those just those simple ion bands that you saw on the infomercial at 3 o'clock in the morning uh, that say that they uh, they can stabilize? I actually, when I was in Vegas uh, for NAB a couple months ago, I saw somebody uh, try and sell one of those ion bracelets where they had the person just, they, 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 they pushed them down and then they had put on the brace and they lifted up their leg and they, and they pushed them down. But are these wearables actually functional as devices that will that'll help you uh, so next year I won't have back pain I won't have this arm brace on next year or anything like that so interesting stuff and uh, that was over on uh, foxnews.com yeah I know Fox News most reliable source of news and stuff like that but Luke do you have any uh, do you have any back pain besides me <laughs> you are not a pain in the back neck side uh, any any of that uh, no I I um, I have had some knee pain uh, a little bit. Every once in a while, I kind of twist my knee a little yeah. bit. I think it's just one of those things of getting older that um, you know you get some of your joints start to you know wear out. Some of your muscles are maybe not strong enough for the extra weight that you start to put on. Yeah. Um, but you know it's uh, uh, it's always good. Health is definitely a big uh, big big factor. Um, so yeah, I mean anything that gets you more active and helps you keep in, keep track of you know how you're doing uh is really really well uh you know it, it's a really good thing yeah definitely, um, definitely. i personally like fox news uh they <laughs> they're a great client of ours uh, <laughs> so. there you go um well you know it's fox i i don't, really don't care so let's move on uh to the next segment of the show it's called the Apple Watch Watch that will never go away because, in all reality, we're always going to be watching. That's going to be the forefront. If it's not Google Glass, what are you doing? It's a TikTok of a watch. Oh, okay. Although I don't think watches are quite that loud. So. Yeah, well, they don't go whatever you were doing there. So, yeah. um, But it... <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> so anyway. <clears throat> where were we? Oh, yeah, Apple Watch Apple Watch. watch. Uh, WWDC uh, happened uh, just a few hours ago, and we had some uh, really cool stuff uh, that came out. And only six weeks after the Apple Watch actually came out, and they were really they were going, they were going oh yeah, this is, you know we just brought this thing out, and now we're upgrading it. This is wild. So uh, that that's my impression of Tim Cook, by the way. <laughs> it wasn't too good. So uh, they're getting ready for the next one. Of course, WWDC showed off some new features in OS 10, iOS. And what they're calling Watch iOS, Apple tweaked the SDK to bring more options to your watch, and I also think they've made it open source. If I was uh, watching it uh, as I was working, so um, I saw that. So uh, music through your speakers, uh, which will be the one of the new features that you can do, because apparently a lot of people ask for it, although it'll sound like junk. I don't know why. Improved biometrics and more. Most important, excuse me, third-party apps can run natively to take 
data directly from the sensors in close to real time, as close as it can be from transferring uh, wirelessly from one to the other. So uh, now you don't you don't work with any Apple Watch development, do you? Uh, I personally don't. I don't work on that, but I do have a bunch of coworkers who have worked on Apple Watch uh, apps. Um, so, yeah, I think uh, that's that's safe to talk about in, in a sense that uh, I probably shouldn't go into details because I'm not sure which clients may be. Well, you don't have uh, to say which you know, clients. I'm just asking yeah, if so. I, I'm just I'm just asking if you if you've ever coded an Apple Watch so yet. And... I have not ever done okay. any of that, uh, but I know that. Uh, a lot of these enhancements that are being made are very exciting. Uh, they bring it a lot more, uh, I guess they bring a lot more parity to the platform uh, compared to Android Wear. So this idea of running apps natively on the device, uh, you know, where all the processing and the app logic is happening on the device is uh, something that was missing in the first version. And there are lots yeah. of reasons why they did it. Uh, and it, you know, it worked fine. There's a lot of, you know, however many apps that they had out there, hundreds of apps out there uh, they, that uh, run, you know, on Apple Watch now. But you'll you'll see a whole new level of apps come out. Things that are able to run faster, better. Uh, they'll be able to do more. Uh, you'll see a lot more of the stuff with the speakers. Like, yeah, I know it's it's probably not going to sound real good. Um, you probably wouldn't want to watch a lot of videos on it. They they showed you know now you'll be able to push videos to it and watch videos so like vine and stuff i'm not really sure how much people are going to want to watch vine videos on a screen that small but you know if, if that's kind of your option is like you're in line at the register and hey there's a new vine from yeah. somebody and you're like well let me just watch it okay well it only took a few seconds so you know i can tell if it's good or not if it's really really good maybe i'll watch it later on my phone too but yeah um for most how, people, how many how many vines are really good though that's uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all of them, I'm sure, according to Vine. But uh... <laughs> and and well, the other thing is, I'm wondering if they're if uh, well if if uh, if you're using it on the phone in portrait mode, it won't matter. But if it's landscape mode, will you be watching it in sixteen nine or four by three? Because oh, yeah. the Apple Watch mm. uh, screen is four by three. Yeah, um, it's it's and it's is it portrait or landscape four by three? Like, is it? I think it's slightly taller than it is wide. I I, I don't know. I know I it's square. Actually, yeah, I'm looking at the watch, uh, looking at this uh, this image right here. You can tell that it's it's uh, higher than wider. Yeah, yeah. So. so so yeah, like yeah, for square videos, I mean, there'll be there'll be a little bit of wasted space on the screen, you know, just a little bit. But yeah, yeah, you're you're not gonna want to watch a movie on it. Um, I'm sure the battery life would not support that anyway. Uh, there's but it's really neat because they'll be able to do a lot more with it. Yeah. So I I think it's um, it's good. It's not unexpected. This is uh, a lot of the updates that people were asking for, and that you know we were kind of expecting based on uh, the limitations that were there. You know, yeah. Kind of expecting what was missing, but um, it's really good. Yeah. The digital crown control actually letting you use that thing besides just an Apple apps so that yeah. that'll help a lot. I understand I understood why they decided not to give the world out um with the crown, but now now that they're they're letting you do that, I think that's great. One thing that I noticed uh, that they talked about was the ability cuz you know, they've kind of hinted at before. Uh you you get on and you get your airplane tickets and instead of uh instead of pulling out your phone to uh scan the little barcode, it would be on your watch, which is great. But if you are, t and, and I, I just found this out because I don't have TSA pre on my travel mm -hmm. um, because I don't, I don't travel as much. And I usually, when I go through lines, it's really not that long. So um, I, they gifted me pre last week when I was going to Vegas, and, but they didn't tell me anything about it. And one of the things that you have to, uh, you have to do is you have to have uh, your, your boarding passes on you at all times. Because then you go to another station and the guy goes, well, uh, are you pre? And it's like, you say, yeah. And they go, well, I need to see the boarding pass. It's like, well, it's running through the uh, it's running through the scanner right now because I put all my stuff into the little bins like you tell me to. Yeah. And so if, if it's on your watch, you know, you've got to show that watch to them. And then, then you got to throw it into the bin and throw it through the, the machine or whatnot. So I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused on that one. But you know, it does make life easier, especially if you're uh, if you're boarding the plane. You just do this, 
and you get on the plane and, and go from there. But uh, other than that, uh, I like the I like the fact that they brought the SDK out. They brought the open source SDK now. They um, they open sourced that? the Swift programming language. Oh, that that's what that okay. So they did not open source the watch OS or iOS. They only open sourced the Swift programming language. But they did say they would have it for Mac and Linux. Yeah. Uh, so they didn't say Windows. Uh, but with it being open source, maybe somebody will you know, figure that out. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that how that plays out. Well, the best part is then, then a lot of people will be able to take iOS apps and then uh, create them and port them over to Linux and and maybe Android or something like that. It, it'll be interesting to see what happens because yeah, if somebody creates a uh, compiler or you know, yeah. um, runtime for. Swift, it's like, in theory, you could maybe have Swift apps running on on uh, something else. You yeah. Know? Especially if it runs on Linux, because Android's based on Linux. Yep. So, you know, you never know. You never so that know. means that means you're going to have to be dealing with that very, very soon. Uh, probably not very, very soon. Well, okay. <laughs> but, Within uh, the next three months. It's not, no, well, no, actually, no, it, it comes out later this month, if I remember correct. I think they're going to open source it soon, yeah, sooner yeah. than iOS nine launching. But so. yeah, but it'll be interesting. We'll see. What, we'll see what happens. Of course, that uh, uh, how how many wearables could be using the Swift programming language? Have you have you you haven't know. are you haven't looked at the programming language yet? Or I I have looked at it very minimally. I haven't looked at it very much. So got it. Um, yeah, I haven't haven't really uh, done anything with it. I've thought about it though. Uh, okay. But... Well, you, you're going to have to look at it a little bit more now. So Yeah, probably should. Probably <laughs> All right, let's move on from here. Let's go to the next segment. And, of course, our next segment is FundMe. That is uh, any of the... Uh, any of those uh, companies that are uh, that are looking for... Whoops. That are looking for uh, uh, crowdfunding to get their, their idea across, including this company right here. It's called Lovely. How lovely is this? It is... And uh, I see Luke squirming a little bit here on this one. Do you, do you, so basically, do you want Love better? It. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Do you want better sex? Maybe Lovely will help. It's a device you put on your male member to get tips to have better sex. Lovely monitors your body movements and sends data to the app, not uh, not data from Star Trek. That, no, no, <laughs> data to the app. Uh, you Star can, Trek references. Yeah. Well, you know, you got to try. Uh, you can find out top speeds calories burned uh and can even help you going without little blue pills because apparently it inhibits the blood flow or something like that so uh it's an indiegogo campaign as you could see it was we're not we're, you know we're, we're trying to be as pg as possible about this but this is a wearable technology so it's you know it's, it's part of the whole thing um right now they're uh, at nineteen thousand uh us dollars which is about 20 percent funded they're looking for ninety-five thousand dollars in uh, in funding for this little device, and it's just basically it looks like a guitar pick with a hole in it, <laughs> and uh, and and of course a charging stand, and of course the app. Let's uh let's scroll down here a little bit. Kind of go over here. There we go. Let's scroll down a little bit and try not to show because they do show one graphic on there. So you basically put on the uh, lovely, and you go through the app, and they've got you know everything will be on the app, and then uh, you can find out little different things like like I said, uh, different positions that you can go to uh, make life happier. Yeah, yeah, I think that I think that anybody watching who is watching with children may want to fast forward a few minutes uh to, to avoid this i think this would be oh this is no, this isn't anything that they don't see on fox news or anything like that already uh this may be a little more detailed than <laughs> than a lot of that i don't know uh yeah if you watch the video on that uh on the indiegogo campaign they kind of explain everything uh yes there are uh, definitely some graphics and uh, terms used that you probably not want to watch at work with your speakers going or uh, at home with small children present, unless you want to answer a lot of questions. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, so here's here's a here's the uh, here's a, a couple better images right there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the uh, fact you can stretch it out. 
And if he stretches it out and he cuts off the bottom ends, it kind of does look like a Star Trek uh, insignia. So we're back to Star Trek. Man, everything relates to Star Trek this time around. So. It, go, it all goes back to Star Trek. Yeah. So, uh, yes, with this, I guess the idea is you could uh, boldly go uh, to <laughs> places you've never gone before. I'm not really oh, I bet you. I bet you people have gone to those places before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey Uh yeah, I mean, it's interesting. Um, yeah, I was watching the video, and they talked about the different things they measure. Um, uh, part of me thinks that this is just kind of ridiculous, honestly. Uh, this is this is taking the quantified self to to an extreme, like you're trying to measure these things. And they, for example, one thing they mention in the video is G-forces. They want to measure G-forces here, and I'm like... I I don't like okay one uh, that that may be a little extreme. It's like um, I don't know exactly who they're targeting with this, um, but it seems awfully I don't know very active, uh, very uh, like I don't know. I can, I guess I'll, just... I'll no I'll tell you exactly who they're going after. They're going after the people that want to get pregnant, um, or, or want to have a better sex life. Yeah. Those are the those are the two types of people. I mean, uh, I mean that the calories burned, because uh, you know everybody always says, "Yeah, let's do the sex diet," because that's you know yeah, a thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, force and speed and temperature um, is one of the things that they uh, monitor, and mm-hmm. uh, history. So you know, if if somebody's uh, trying to have children, this might be uh, this might be a way to keep track of when you guys did it and, and how. <laughs> How frequent it was and stuff like that. I don't know. Maybe that's yeah. where they're going. But uh, you know, those are the two the two main areas is is just keeping people's sex lives going. And if you need a device to do that, there's a a lot of them already. Yeah, and and I guess that's maybe that's <coughs> the other part is that it feels like uh, you know a hundred bucks. That's that's not quite impulse purchase. Um, I think they're actually out of the hundred version, hundred dollar version. So it's like. Um, 129 or 159 or so. Um, the retail price they're saying, uh, sorry, is 169, uh, which I guess kind of makes sense um, as a price point. But uh, I guess it's it's interesting that like they're good. Like it's not quite impulse purchase. Like it seems like this wouldn't be something that you would just be like, oh hey, this seems like something fun. Let's just pick this thing up. It's like it's maybe a little bit more expensive than that. But I don't know if all of that data that's collecting would actually be useful. So I guess I would take the counterpoint side of this of like, well, you can probably, you know, like, okay, you want to keep track of how often? Well, a piece of paper and a pen is going to be, you know, like, I think you can write down, uh, yeah. you know, uh, okay, uh, uh, six, you know, June 8th, you know, whatever it is. Um, you know, <laughs> like, that's a whole lot easier than like. June, June I, did, I did, June was, oh. Where are we? Oh, there we go. Uh, June 8th, did it six times. I was <laughs> fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you mean something like, like that, right? No, yeah. So uh, the, you know, the stimulation toy aspects of this, I'm guessing there are cheaper versions. I don't, <laughs> never purchased something like that. Uh, so <laughs> I, I, I'm I, not up on my pricing, uh, but I'm guessing that they're less than $169. Uh, so you know, so it's like, I think that the only thing, like the whole justification for that was, um, you know, is, is all this data that they're tracking, right? Yeah. Calories burned, um, you know, speed, uh, that kind of stuff. So it's like, well, that's, that's all interesting, um, moves you've made, you've made 832 moves. I, I don't even know what that means exactly. Um, I guess that's just moving around. Like I, I guess. Yeah, I have, I have so, no idea either. So. so I don't know. It, it's interesting. Um, I think that. Uh, I think Birdie's getting upset with this stuff. <laughs> no, no. So, so it's like yeah, and I, I mean the wireless charging, obviously for health reasons, I'm sure is the only way they they could go uh, with this. Um, yeah, you'd have to be careful, like. Well, I don't know. I, I'm sure that, you know, there's a target market for it. Um, it is it a bad product? No. Um, is it? But I don't know. I guess I just feel like 
it seems like you're trying to spend, like you're going to spend a lot of money trying to quantify something that most people would say, I, like, are those numbers really what matter in that kind of encounter? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, like, is it really like, well, you know, honey, this is pretty good, but according to last, you know, based on last time, this is actually <laughs> not as good. And it's like, you know, so like, is that really how, like, should we be quantifying this kind of, you know, emotional experience that, you know, for most people, like, like, that's like trying to say, well, I don't know. I, mean, I guess I'm trying to come up with a good, good rationale. It's, it'd be like trying to, let, let me go a completely different direction. Let's say you're trying to quantify how good, you know, your, uh, your, your desserts are that you're having with your meals. And so it's like, okay, I had a bowl of ice cream and it's like, you could have some sensor that's like, well, how warm is it? How cold is it? Uh, you know, what's the volume? What's it? And you can take all of these measurements for it. But in the end, does it really, you know, would all those measurements really matter as opposed to just like that emotional response of, oh, that was really good. You know, like, I really enjoyed that ice cream, you know, like, well, but it, ha you know, it had slightly, you know, uh, more salt than I believe is acceptable or something, you know, <laughs> like there's too much salt in that. So too, too much, is, is too much salt, salt in that. Yeah, too much salt in your ice cream. You know, it's like, well, does it really matter? You know, like if you enjoyed it, you know, like do, do you really, you know, like you can rank it maybe. I understand like the one to five star ranking, but all of this data collection is just like to me a little ridiculous that you would try to spend your time uh, measuring that. Now, like you said, if you're trying to measure um, frequency or if you're trying to um, you know, for fertility reasons, you're trying to match up with certain, you know, certain key dates or whatever and trying to find the right times to do it. Like that's, a, that's one thing that's, you know, using data to like try to figure out, okay, what are fertile periods or something yeah. like that? Um, fertile times, uh, you know, best times to conceive, like, sure. Like I'm not saying data isn't useful for something like this, but it feels like the data that it's collecting isn't like... I don't know. I don't know. It, I don't know. It just doesn't seem like it's the most useful yeah. piece of data from this whole experience. You know, like I think that, like, yeah. Well, you know, as as the old saying goes, "To each their own." And mm -hmm. uh, if if that's what you want to, sure. If you... I, yeah. So yeah, like I said, like you know, if this is the product you want, and you think that, oh man, this is perfect. This is how I'm going to, you know, whatever. Enjoy enjoy this more. Um, you yeah. know, feel like I'm making progress more, like yeah. whatever, like, Hey, you know, like that, that's fine. You know? Yeah. Like if you want to try it, but I guess I, I'm feeling, I'm feeling like this is kind of silly, um, in some ways, but you know, like, like, like you said, to each their own. Yeah. Um, I'm not, you never, you never this. know. I mean, there might yeah. be, there might be some cases down the road that this comes in the, when you pioneer something, whether it be the wearable for your heart rate or the wearable for your uh, for how many reps you uh, you pull up or how many laps you swim or anything like that, you know, you, that you can put a patent around it. You can put a utility patent around things. And, mm -hmm. and then when somebody else, you know, Apple comes to knock and says, hey, we want to buy your idea, you know, uh, that's, that's, that's where it all goes and, and, and the reality of things. So, uh, but yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing. If you're interested in it, it's up on Indiegogo um, for $129. You can get your own once they come out. And uh, or, or you can just get a T-shirt if you want. You know, that's a, that's a pretty good wearable right there. So, all right, and that does it. <laughs> that does it for our section and what we call big news, little arms. Rar. I got, rar. I got to do that because Luke likes to to uh, do the rar twice. And uh, yeah. and uh, you know we're, we're we're trying to rebuild. We're trying to make the structure happen. So. Uh, the show works a little bit better for you if you only want to catch the first 15 minutes of what's going on in the wearable news. You watch the first, or listen to the first 15 minutes of the show, um, then you move on. Or if you want to hear us rant and rave about uh, male member wearable technology, you can continue <laughs> on from there. Or if you want to learn a little bit more about Diablo 3 or Star Trek, that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for, all this other cool stuff. So, But we did have a three-week uh, uh, off period, and, of course, Luke, you uh, you got to do, do the uh, Google I.O. thing, which uh, there, there's some cool news that came from there, too. So why don't you key us in on what's going on? Okay, so I can definitely talk about uh, what happened at I.O. So this was 
not last week, but the week before last, uh, Google I.O. happened, and it was it was really interesting. Uh, if you've if you've never been or you don't you know you don't really follow it, uh, Google has a lot of different products, not just Android, yeah. um, not just uh, Google Glass. Like they have a lot of different technology, and so they use this one conference. It's a two day conference, which is very short. Uh, and they try to get all their information about, you know, kind of the next year, like their plans. They talk about the next version of Android. They talk about what's new in Chrome and in their web development and then their mm -hmm. cloud. And they talk about all their stuff. Plus, they talk about their self-driving cars and their their weather balloon internet uh, stuff. Well, it's, it's, it's really no different than what WWDC is. It's just on Google's side of it. It's not, yeah, it's not really different, except Google has a much more diverse portfolio than Apple. Apple yeah. basically has, you know, desktops and then mobile and now watch. And, you know, there's Apple TV, you know, occasionally comes up and, like so, like everything they sell is at the is at the Apple Store, and it's very you know it's a pretty limited uh, group of products. Google just it's so diverse, like there's yeah. just so many different things on there, you know. Um, and so they talked about a lot of different stuff. But as far as wearable goes, there were two projects that they showed off at uh, the ATAP group. That's their Advanced Technology and Projects. Uh, subgroup. It's kind of their R and D department, or mm -hmm. one of their R and D departments. They actually have a couple. Um, so this is one uh, that uh, they uh, they you know have showed off. Uh, they showed them off last year. It's where Project Tango was introduced, and then uh, this year they showed off a couple new ones. And the first one that I want to talk about is Project Soli, not Instant Sulu. Uh, Project Soli. Uh, so oh, that's my phone. Yeah, and, and, and we're going to get to that in a second. I, 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 but, uh, I wanted to just get the general idea oh, okay. of just what's get the going general on idea. with the, okay. uh, So they showed that. off. I'll, I'll, let me just name drop the other one, too. So they dropped, dropped Project Soli and Project Jacquard, uh, two very interesting projects as they relate to wearables. Um, we're going to be uh, talking about those a little bit more. Wait but yeah, just this big overview. I just, I just thought of something. It's Project Jacquard. Make it so. Think about that. But it's not Jean Luc Picard; it's Jacquard. Yeah, but make it so. And it's yeah, make it so. S E W is that? Well, let's let's saying? let's move on. We'll just uh, I just I just dropped that. I just you know, my little shower, my Reddit shower thought of the day: Jacquard, make it yeah. so. Well, it's really named for the jacquard weaving process for <laughs> looms. It's not like yeah, it, it, no, yeah, yeah. But, but you, come on, it was funny. Just yeah, laugh. Yeah, it's a, another Star Trek. Reference. I like my Man, girlfriend. Like my a goodness, super Star Trek. Show. Yeah, what's up with that? Yeah, so. it's awesome. All right, well we'll, well, we'll well let's do this. We'll get into that. But first of all, I want to want to do a couple things here. First of all, I want to point you to our uh, our our area. Um, over on Amazon, it's uh, it's uh, basically wearabletoday.com forward slash deals. And what that is is basically an area where you can go if you want to get yourself a wearable device. You can go and, and do that. You're looking for, uh, I don't think there's going to be too many Apple Watches on there, but I know that there's some Moto 360s for under, uh, for under $150. Bucks. Um, you can get Fitbits, you can get Flexes, you can get uh, uh, pretty much a lot of great deals over on, and these, this one right here, I'm going to get these. These are the dubs. Um, they're they're headphones, or no, they're not headphones, I'm sorry, they're earplugs for when you go out to concerts so you can hear things a little bit better. I definitely want to get those. So um, check that out. It's over at wearabletoday.com forward slash deals. I should have bought that. I, I actually had uh, made a purchase on Amazon today for new harmonicas, and I should have got that with that. So mm -hmm. I'll have to do that when we're done. So, um, so yeah, that's over at wearabletoday.com forward slash deals. The other thing is if you go over to the YouTube channel, over on the right side, there's an there's a little donate button. Um, if you want to throw five ten dollars our way, that's how we keep the lights on. That's how we keep the show going, and we really appreciate it if you do that. Uh, and go ahead and subscribe over to uh, it's it's like youtube.com forward slash this week in glass, but just do uh, wearable today uh, in the search, and that'll that'll point you there. 
Um, also, you can also go wearabletoday.com forward slash YouTube, and it'll take you over there and go from there. So, all right, let's get into the focus because, uh, well, actually, before we do this, we'll, let's let's show off our little black pills here. Oh, you got no. your little black pill? Right here. All right. We got we got these in the mail, um, and uh, this definitely is it goes with uh, with uh, Google I/O because they talked about the new version of Google Cardboard, mm -hmm. which I have my Google Cardboard right here. Luke actually sent that to me. Thank you, Luke. So that's the uh, you put the phone in and then you watch it like this. It's like a technically like a ViewMaster. They came out with a 2.0 version, which has a hole for a button or something like that. And uh, can now support uh, phones six inches, I believe, correct? Yeah, it can support phones that are a little bigger because of how it folds up. Um, yeah, it, it, it just folds up a little differently so it can fit larger devices. Yeah. So we got, we, I got an email from the folks over at, uh, what are they, uh, googletech.net. And they said, hey, we've got our own version of cardboard out there. Google Tech or Goggle Tech? Goggle Tech. Is it Goggle? Goggle Tech. Dot, dot, Goggle Tech dot net. And I can show you this. Uh, let's, uh, here it is right here. Uh, this is their website right here um, where they experience the 3D VR spaceship. Um, as you can see, they have uh, these, uh, these C1 glass and then the, the 4D VR. And uh, so, but basically, they sent us the uh, the C1 glass, which is these things, which are really cool because they kind of look like little steampunk glasses, but they don't fit too well this way. <laughs> but no. you basically, you you have your phone nearby, right? Yeah, I do. Right okay, here. why don't you why don't you show people how this all works? So you've got this 40 glass or 40 goggles. Go yeah. 4D. Um, it's pretty easy to do. What you do is it, it looks like they're glasses with the lenses in the front. And that's where I would say the most confusing part of this is. So really what you do is you turn them around and you put your phone in so that the screen is facing the lenses. And my phone is a little thick because it's, it's got, the case got on a you. case on it. But because of this being nice and flexible, it actually fits in there just fine. And so what happens is, let me unlock this so you can kind of see what's going on here. And you basically get, you basically get the phone looking through there, yeah. right? And then what you do is you look through the lenses from this side. So the lenses are towards you and the phone is behind. Yeah. And how that works is you can bring up the cardboard app. Or their special app, which they or their, have. Or, or any cardboard compatible yeah, app. They, like they, they, have, have. they have their app on, on the side. There's a little QR code that you can. Uh, and it's for iOS and for Android. So that works. Yes. So. And so you can bring up um, the screen. And you basically get this nice little view. And so let's see if I kind of tilt this. You can see that there are two images there. Uh, that's left eye and right eye. And then when you look through it, it actually blends together and creates this really nice uh, 3D image. And uh, if I had to give my review of it, I would say that I actually like this more than the Google Cardboard um, for a couple of reasons. One is it folds up much smaller. So they... They're really clever, so it folds down, you know, inward like that, and then they have this nice little carrying case for it. Mm -hmm. So it fits into a much smaller package, and it's a lot more, I don't know, portable because you, you know, this is going to hold up a lot better to being inside a bag or whatever. Yeah. So there's the kind of practical use there. But when I plugged or when I, you know, pop my phone into it and use some of the, you know, standard cardboard demos that I've used on Google Cardboard. Um, they actually looked better in this thing. Like, yeah. I don't know what it is. I don't know if the lenses are just slightly better aligned or, or what. But when I put it on, I was like, wow, this looks sharper and clearer. And 
And I've used cardboard very recently and popped it in, and it was like the exact same demo, and yeah. it was very, very interesting. Um, the only downside to it is there's no little clicker on it. So um, on, the, on the original version of cardboard, they did it with a magnet on the side. So you see there's your little kind of your little ring on the side that when you slide that up and down. That's this thing right here. Yeah. So if you, yeah, if you close up the side there, you can see that that ring basically um, can be slid. And that's how they did it on the first version. That's, that's not, yeah, yeah that's not the, um, that's not how they do it on the new version. Yeah, so that's that was a really clever idea. But yeah. on the new version, they actually have a little series of cardboard levers that when you push down on the side, kind of where you would put, push down on the Viewmaster, it actually kicks a little arm out and touches the screen. And so you're basically just tapping the screen. Yeah. Uh, so it makes it really nice because you can be holding it and then click your finger and it will tap the screen for you. So with this version, you do have to kind of reach under and tap the screen yourself whenever you want to go on to the next little uh, section or... Or um, this is just what, a magnet. Yeah, this is just a magnet and a magnet. Mm -hmm. So if you if you can jerry-rig some sort of magnet, here's because there's a, there's a regular magnet glued on one side, and then uh, this is just a washer. Oh, yeah, yeah. just there you go. Yeah, and you could probably and, do something like that. Yeah. But because this thing is so small, like you can see, it's like it's just tiny compared to the phone. Um, it's actually really easy to, even while you're using it, just to kind of reach over the top of the side and tap the screen. So you can pretty much hold your, your hand in front of it and, you know, kind of hold it up to your eye and then just tap it with your finger just, you know, on the screen somewhere. So it's really easy, actually. Um, it's just, it's not quite, you know, as yeah. elegant as having a little clicker button. But yeah. It's not much more work. So uh, I really, I really like it. And man, I look in here and it's just, it's so sharp and clear. And like with cardboard at all, like with the official one, I don't know if the lenses are just, just a little lower quality or what exactly, but this one, it, it, it just looks a little nicer. And I don't know why yeah. that is. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm guessing that they, they worked a little bit harder at it than, than cardboard. I mean, this is a piece of cardboard, and uh, the one the one problem I have with cardboard is it, it just always seems to fall apart. I mean, like this side here, it's yeah, uh, that, that glue doesn't hold. That doesn't hold too well. One of the most famous monuments. I don't know. I hit the exhibit. Oh, okay. So <laughs> uh, that's that's the good thing. I the one the one problem I have with these glasses mm -hmm. is the fact that uh, unlike cardboard, where when you put the phone in, you've got a dark environment to see through mm. this one if you're outside you might get sun glare or anything oh, like yeah. that you won't be able to uh to see it the other thing is i'm i and, and i don't get it why didn't they make a actually set a bow so i can uh, so i can hold it like this and not have to hold it so i can just put it mm. on like a pair of glasses and have the phone on um mm. i wish i had the you know a few years ago at ces i got this hat that allowed me to take the smartphone and put it in the in the hood part and then it had a little magnifying glass so i could sit back and watch a movie or something like that it didn't have 3d ability like this just yet but i bet you if i found that hat i could probably do some jerry rigging to put yeah. this into that hat right clip and, it up underneath there and then yeah yeah and have some and have some fun with it and you know so because that's the thing is you want you want to watch let's say you're watching uh i don't know age of ultron or something like that and you want to watch it in 3D, that's what this is supposed to be for, for personal 3D viewing. Um, and, of course, if you want to do the, the, the you know, the, uh, the, the, play motion, the play motion stuff we were talking about earlier, um, stuff, stuff like this would really help in that virtual reality 3D uh, update. So um, it, it's pretty cool. I, I, I don't have any problems with it. I, like, I thank the guys at, uh, at uh, Goggle, GoggleTech.net for uh for getting us a pair of these you know you know they're the same price as cardboard pretty much i think maybe a couple dollars more but uh they're definitely well worth it and and i uh, really enjoyed it so thank you guys very much for that and uh and we'll 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 be looking at it a little bit more as in the weeks to come so oh yeah i will definitely be packing those along and like this is the version i'd be taking to show people like how yeah. it works because this is like this is so much more portable um, folds down smaller, um, 
and yeah, I wouldn't worry about this getting broken or whatever yeah. if it was in my bag. So yeah. um, whereas that cardboard one, you got to be careful with because it's just cardboard. So yeah. well, um, you could fold it up. I mean, but yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. So all right, well, let's get into the main section here, and this is a this is where we were going with Google I/O, uh, Soli and. What was it called? The Jacquard? Jacquard. And we were we were making fun of Star Trek because it sounded like, you know, Captain Jacquard making it so. <laughs> um, so, but basically we've got these two projects here. And this is this is actually really, really sweet. The first one is uh, Jac- uh, uh, Soli that we're going to talk about here. And I'll let you go on there. We're going to show you the page for YouTube. But we're not going to do too much video because the copyright issues and blah, blah, blah. I don't want to get into that whole mess. So this is Project Soli. Go ahead, and, uh, Luke. So Project Soli is the new, or like I said, it's from this ATAP group inside Google. And basically it's, you know, think of it as a, uh, as motion tracking. Uh, Previously, the hardware for motion tracking has been way too large. It's only appeared in dedicated devices like Microsoft's Kinect or that Leap Motion that maybe you saw a year or two ago that would let you kind of do some gestures in front of your computer. So over the last year, the ATAP group at Google has been working to shrink it down. And now it's about the size of maybe a grain of rice. Like the, the chip they showed was very, very small. So, um, you know, a couple millimeters by a couple millimeters, um, you know, is, is what they showed the device or is what they showed some of their hardware being at. Um, they demonstrated all these early versions at I.O. live and to pretty much everybody there, it looked like it would revolutionize how you would use your device. Um, it was just really, really interesting. They, didn't, they weren't announcing that it was in a new product or anything, uh, but the idea was it was kind of radar. So I'll, I'll do kind of a demo of what we saw. So imagine you had a watch in front of you and what he did was a demo where uh, he wanted to change the time on the watch, you know, something that technically I guess isn't really needed because most of them auto set based on network time and stuff, but it works as an interesting uh, little um, example. So he was holding his hand over the sensor and he was just kind of flipping, you know, flicking through it, you know, with like two fingers and it was changing the hour. So it was detecting motion and detecting the hour, you know, and changing the hour up. Uh, and you know, the, the more he did it, the faster it would change. Yeah. And then he said, okay, so I want to change the minutes. So I'll just do this. And he just held his hand up, you know, a few inches, uh, you know, maybe four or five inches higher. And he, you know, did the same little flicking motion and then it would change the minutes. And then he went back down and it was changing the hours and then went back up and it was changing the minutes. And so it was able to detect that movement and the distance. Yeah. And, uh, it was able, you know, and so you could imagine doing things like that. They, they, what they envision is eventually you'll be able to do different kinds of motion. So let me show like, so like if you were twisting, that might be like you're, you know, twisting a, a, uh, a knob or, or something, you know, kind of yeah. top or a virtual crown or something. Like yeah. That. And then they would have like, even like potentially, uh, you know, like rubbing along your finger to maybe adjust the volume, like, you know, high volumes here, and then you could lower it by sliding it along your finger. Yeah. And they're saying that they're able to, detect all of that different data. They showed us a lot of live uh, data coming out of one of these sensors just to kind of show they've got some sonar stuff and then they can extrapolate that down. And um, and they the idea is that you'll be able to do different gestures and it'll be able to tell what you're doing so that you could make adjustments to the screen, maybe scrolling through, you know, you could just scroll through the screen by kind of rubbing your fingers together as opposed yeah. to having to touch the screen. You know, is that the, you know, is, is well, that it's, the, the limit? Yeah, no, I, no. I, I think it would be more than that. I mean, uh, you just think of it like, you know, Iron Man, you know, he brings up the the uh, thing up on the screen and he does this and it widens it out and he yeah. shortens it up. It's like tweak this and maybe draw on this or, or something yeah. like that. So, yeah, um, it's it, and of course we have seen it before, like you said, with the Leap and the uh, and uh, some of the other devices. And even even with some of the touchscreen devices, it's 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 a little bit. It's not the same technology, of course, but uh, definitely uh, with your pinches and, and your movements, uh, they they take from that that idea. It's pretty it's pretty cool. I mm-hmm. like the uh, I like the idea, and I can't wait for it to go a little bit more 
on to the geeky side. Like, I was just watching, uh, flipping through channels, and there was Cowboys and Aliens, if you remember that movie. And uh, what's his name? Uh, had the had the the wrist thing on that that popped up the little viewfinder or something like that. So it's just you know you point and shoot type thing, and uh, pretty cool stuff. So yeah, I mean it was all very R and D. You know this wasn't a a real product. They weren't demoing real software. They were just demoing some conceptual stuff that they had working in their lab. And uh, really really interesting. And people are just you know are going nuts over this idea of instead of trying to make controls on the screen useful enough where you have to actually touch them, why not be able to have controls that aren't actually on the screen and have it where you're just moving your hand around? And yeah. um, it was really, really interesting and really exciting to see, uh, you know, maybe if, if not for wearables, you maybe you also have those in the computer so that, yep. you know, when you want to do something, you can just do some, do some uh, motions on the screen. And, oh, there's more than that. I mean, think about walking up to your car and going, and that unlocks your car, or whatever your uh, whatever your uh, your your pattern is yeah. unlocks, and you could do it like twenty feet away. You could go, and or, may, um, the other thing I remember TechCrunch disrupt last year. They had a way to sign on with. I'll use this as as my cell phone because it's close enough. Where you'd hold down a button and then you'd sign your name to get into your cell phone in the air because uh -huh. no two people can do the same that same gesture as you. Um, so, uh, so, you know, just these little things that let you have security and be able to walk up to your car and have just the doors open or walk up to your house, have the doors open, um, uh, be able to uh, access, you know, I don't know, be able to access the home automation, turn on the air conditioning before you get home or the heater before you get home, whatever, mm -hmm. and, uh, go from there. That's, that's pretty cool stuff. I, I like that. So. But there was another wearable technology there that we're also making it so, and that was Jacquard, right? And that one's even more wearable, I would say. I'd say so oh, yeah. it's like, well, it's really radar input, you know, or kind of radar detection and stuff that um, they said they would use it on wearables. Jacquard is, there is <laughs> this is absolutely wearable. So this is a smart fabric. They have this special it seems like newly invented uh, wires, you know, this, this kind of smart thread or metallic thread that they're actually weaving together. And here, here there's just a little bit of video of, of how they actually made it. And you can watch this whole uh, thing. We've got links to it. And they yeah. basically embed these, you know, these crisscrossing designs using these metal wires into the fabric itself. And the ATAP video from I.O., very enlightening, explained a lot behind this where uh, they talked about, well, do you make, you put wires in the whole thing and they showed what that looked like. And they're like, that was really impractical because you've got, like, it's really hard to, to splice into the wires and you have all these extra wires that you're not using. Uh, so how do you do it? And so it, they made it sound like they kind of invented some new processes of, of how do you put these wires in and just very specific areas and trying to, instead of trying to put them through the whole fabric yeah. uh, and kind of target certain areas to make them wearable and then make the wires easy to extract and hook up to the technology. And, and they go into all this detail of how they do it, but what they end up with is this grid. And then they wrote software and some, uh, a little bit of hardware uh, that, that ties into it. And I actually ha took some video of using it uh, on my Google Plus page. I don't know if you want to go try to find that real quick. Um, okay, I can do that, yeah. Because that, cause that video you can use all day long. Um, I am hereby giving you rights to that uh, verbally, and there's video evidence <laughs> of that now, so uh, I won't I won't come back at you uh, in court over it. Um, but if you want to better not, I'd, I'd have to fire you from the show. <laughs> you said I could use it, and then you sued me later. Uh, no, so it's really interesting because it becomes this trackpad, but... It's a trackpad that has like, not only like, just detecting where touches are, but it can detect uh, like the, the pressure, it seemed like, and also even just getting close to it. Like Once you got close to it, before you even touched it, somehow the fields were picking it up because the, the readout display that they had there was obviously adjusting. Um, there's the trip to San Francisco and Mountain View there at the top. Um, try that one, and then... Um, I was just going to go to the videos, but okay, that works. Yeah, too. I don't know if 
yeah, that, that one, it may also be hard to look through there. So, uh, I could yeah, try can, to can, Yeah, anyway, no, go ahead and so, continue. Anyway, yeah. so it's this interesting touchpad. So it's not something that you would want to try to use as a touchpad full, you know, on your device completely. Um, you would, you know, it wouldn't replace your, the touchpad on your laptop or anything, but it could replace some simple gestures and give you something physical to touch uh, that would then help you react to what is, um, yeah, I don't think that it's going to be on the YouTube because I didn't publish it to YouTube. Oh, okay. So it's just on my Google plus stuff. I can try to find it real quick. It'll only take a second. Well, uh, it's, it's, it's actually really cool. I, I, what I really, let me uh, flip over Why don't here. You talk and... I'll talk for a little while because, um, the, one of the partnerships, uh, I don't know, you mentioned that, well, Levi Strauss, is uh, going to be partnering with them and uh, be able to uh, uh, put put stuff in there because they, they did show like they had this one shirt and they had the cell phone right there and they did this little gesture on the shirt and that called uh, did a redial or something like that so it would all of a sudden it'd become a hands-free thing where you're you're driving down the road you got a phone call it's like I just I just answered the phone call hey how you on what what what's going on as opposed to this where it's like yes hello Hello, can I help you? I'm driving here. I'm dri so, um, Luke's watching something else. It's not laughing. It's like that. I don't know. Anyway, so the whole point is that uh, um, you'll be able to do not only just tracking, but also be able to do different things. Once again, uh, you could be right at your front door, and you do you know some gesture like this, and all of a you know like a baseball gesture, and then all of a sudden that's gonna that's gonna come up, and I, I won't be able to call that up from uh, Hangouts. Okay. Luke. Let me throw um, in the yeah. Put it in the regular Hangouts. Um, so, oh yeah, you can put it in there too. Yes. Uh, so the the whole idea is that you, you know this could be the truly keyless entry. This could be the truly um, uh, smartphoneless, hands free options that we did. Is that this one right here? Yeah, it should be right next to the okay uh, YouTube link. Try that. Let's do that. So that's that's what I really like about it, and it's all just sewn into your into your jeans. So it was a little chip, and if uh, you just got to make sure that you uh, pull the chip out before you wash the clothes, I suppose. So I don't know. I that's that's one thing that they didn't talk about is like how is this thing powered? I assume it's like a little button cell battery and some sort of uh, little um, you know module that hooks up to those wires, but. I can't imagine that you're going to have to disconnect all those wires because it could be, you know, 20, 30 wires that you've got to connect up just right. So I would guess that the whole thing's waterproof. Um, so there you okay. go. Here we go. So this is Luke playing with the uh, playing with the cloth. It's actually a friend of mine. Oh, I'm sorry. Can, yeah, but uh, so you can see that it's really hard to see in the in that video. Uh, it may be easier uh, if you look at it on my profile, but. Um, like there's just this little pad there and you can see he's moving around and it looks like one of the wires is broken because it never seems to detect um, anything in some area, like in one area there, it always kind of is lower than the rest. But you can see there that like depending on the pressure and how much you're touching, um, it's actually able to, you know, it, it's, it's fairly advanced. It's not just a simple where on the, where in the area are you touching? So it could do things with, based on pressure, it could do things, you know, like yeah. there, there's a lot of really interesting stuff that they could do there um, to really detect, you know, how you're using it. Um, yeah, yeah, it's just, it's just amazing that they've got it and that they're working with Levi's on it, which tells you that there's probably going to be something come out from Levi's, some sort of uh, jeans or, uh, you know, denim jacket or something that'll have this technology built into it where I don't know what you'll be able to do with it. They're, they kind of talked about answering a phone call with it, um, you know, which, you know, would be pretty interesting. You know, your yeah. phone's in your pocket or maybe I, I imagine something where maybe it's on your pants and you just kind of hold down and you hear this little chime and it's Google Now listening then and your your phone starts listening to you know whatever your search entry is yeah and you know it becomes the you know you put it up here uh on your on your shirt and you just you know you tap it and then you ask your question and you're like computer you know how many light years to uh, alpha centauri 
and then it'll tell you and you're like ah thank you computer and again it's a star trek reference <laughs> you know like it, you put the little communicator up there and like that's your that's your touch point into uh google now or Siri. computer <laughs> computer oh wait wait i gotta do it this way computer <laughs> anyway so no, it's it's actually pretty cool. I, I like the idea because it sounds like it's going to be Bluetooth. It sounds like it's going to be programmable buttons. So if let's say uh, let's say you want to snap a picture or something like that, and you got your uh, your GoPro on your head or something like that, and you just do that and poof, oh, just yeah. take a picture. So that's going to be worse than Google Glass. Ha! To all <laughs> of you that that worse or better. Very. Some say it's this, some say the other. I don't know. It's it's, it's weird. But the, the whole thing is it's going to be completely programmable. Plus, mm-hmm. it'll be a series of sensors. You'll find out if your boxers or briefs are, are, are a little bit too warm for you, and then you'll you'll be able to use the lovely thing and go from there. Or, yeah. you know, uh, you'll find it, it'll, it'll probably give you a better, uh, better idea of how many steps you actually do because a pedometer works on movement. But it's a very specific movement that they need to record for that to happen. I was going to show you a picture, but I'm going to show you this wearable next week. We're going to talk about it next week. But, uh, uh, you know, uh, if, if you have something that, like, for instance, let's say this thing right here. This is a perfect example. If we had this, these sensors in here right now, this could tell me how much movement my arm does um and how warm my arm is right now so i can tell if if i need to ice my muscles down a little bit more to bring more blood flow into here if this is too tight for my arm if uh if this is restricting blood flow by any means um or and a whole bunch of other different things so i could put on this and or maybe a cast Mm. that you could put on and have that cloth underneath and then you just get all the that information uh as your arm is or your leg is healing or whatever part is broken is healing and go from there so yeah. that's that's where i'm seeing that come but of course then the ability to actually do swipe technology uh, and not even have your, maybe my phone is over there or something like that and i and i've got a phone call it's like i got to take that phone call but for me to get over there and take the phone call the the, the rings would uh, expire at that point so i just do that and say hold on a second i'm coming to the phone and I've just answered the phone. So lots yeah. of cool stuff, lots of cool technology there. Yeah, it does support multi-touch. So your idea, I think, is genius of of putting it as fabric inside a cast and then being able to detect the pressure at different areas within the cast or something. You could tell if the person is like, are you walking on your, you know, like you've got one of those casts and like, now don't walk on your foot or whatever, you know. Like, yeah. And then the people do, and it's like, well, I can see here, according to the sensor data, you actually walked on this quite a few times, so you need to, you know, you're not listening to what we're saying, and or it would alert you, or it would, you know, whatever. Um, it could tell you, hey, you've got some problems there. But yeah, that's um, that's really interesting, using it as a monitoring device for people in the hospital, or you know, mm-hmm. people that are unconscious, and maybe they can't talk about it, or oh, maybe yeah. it's even communication you- uh, even like even that? putting it in the sheets of in a, in a hospital bed or something like that. If somebody stops breathing, you get that instantly. It's like, oh, hey, something's wrong. Yeah, you can tell immediately. So. Like, like yeah, it's like I think that, yeah, <laughs> like that's what we came up with here in like five minutes of just kind of thinking about it. So imagine, you know, given years of this technology just being pervasive, like it would. I think there'd be a lot of really interesting ideas come out of it, and it and it's coming out like the idea is this cloth is not only you know smarter than you know, dumb cloth or whatever we'll call it. Um, but it's also, uh, you know, not that much more expensive. Like they, they were trying to find ways to integrate with existing processes because they said, this is also in that talk, uh, that they couldn't invent new processes for manufacturing cloth because there's already so many, you know, manufacturers out there. Like there's all these people producing all of this material for shirts and pants and jackets and everything under the sun, you're not going to be able to tell that industry to, hey, stop doing that, make your cloth like this and switch over to these other products. They're going to say, no, we've got millions invested in this, you know, in these looms. So they're going to, like, they were trying to figure out ways they can integrate into that, uh, into that industry instead of having to turn that industry and make them change because they knew they weren't because it's way too big. So, yeah. um, Well, you know, either way, no matter what, these two products right here, definitely usher in a new age of wearable technology 
um, being able to get closer to the skin without having to implant or put onto the skin. Um, I, I'm liking where both of these are going. This is exactly why we have a show like this and we talk about this stuff is it just gets our, our blood going and, and our geek going and, and, and stuff like that. So um, if you have questions, if you've got comments uh, uh, and more, definitely, definitely get a hold of us and, and uh, go from there. Jeff at wearabletoday.com, Luke at wearabletoday.com, and Birdie at wearabletoday.com, and, uh, and go from there. So Luke, why don't you tell everybody, oh, I, I kind of already did, but why don't you tell everybody how they can get a hold, well, there's other ways to get a hold of you. So there's right? other ways to get a hold of me. Besides Luke at wearabletoday.com, you can also reach me on Twitter. I'd love to... Uh, see people tweeting me about wearable today. Ask some questions. Uh, guess the steps that I'm I'm taking each day. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Luke Luca, L U K E L U C A, or you can find me on Google Plus if you want to find any of those photos from uh, San Francisco. Find that video. It's up there on my Google Plus page, uh, which is at Google.com/slash/plus Luke Wallace. All right. And Luke Wallace is spelled down here at the bottom. There you go. And, of course, you can find me over at geekazine.com or wearabletoday.com. Feel free to drop me a line, and we'll definitely talk and go from there. Thank you guys very, very much for watching. Thank you guys very, very much for listening, if you're, uh, if you're on the audio version. We will be back. We've got no plans for next week. Uh, we're going to be back next week, right, Luke? I'll be here. All right, Luke will be here. I won't. No, I'm kidding. I'll be here, and uh, we'll have episode number 74 in your marks. But right now... Thank you for watching episode number 73. It's Wearable Today over at wearabletoday.com. You guys geek out, and we'll see you next week. Take care.